Today, we would like to share with you a new feature from Kenwood. That's right, we have the DDX 9702S. We're gonna show you, or I'm gonna show you, or we're gonna show you all the new sound settings. So stay tuned. So as we said in the intro, we're gonna tell you all about the sound settings on the new DDX 9702S. Mm -hmm. We're also, this is just one of a part, or a series I should say, of videos we're doing on this radio. So if there's a specific feature you're looking for that we might have just talked about slightly in the previous video, which was the unboxing, stay tuned, we got a bunch more to come. And if you like us, please feel free to subscribe. All right, on to this guy. Let's talk about the sound settings in this bay. Okay. bad boy. It's got a whole bunch of cool stuff. All right, so to start with, it's got a five band EQ. Let's take a look at it. Okay. All right, so all radios have balance and fader. Nothing new there. The only cool thing about this one is that after you've managed to get it all out of whack, you can hit center and it'll take you back to the center. It also will show you over here the numbers of where you're at and of course center. All right, let's get to the EQ. Hit enter. It's got a few presets to choose from. We'll go to the top here. Natural is going to be the default that everything, when it comes out of the box, is going to come in. All the sources are going to be set to natural. When I say all the sources, I say that because this radio has source tone adjust. Source tone adjust allows you to make a different EQ setting for each source. So, for example, there's no signal here. Let's go to menu, go to setup, and we'll go to enter. See how it's back on natural? Now, if we go back where we were, menu, we were on tuner, HD, come over here, menu, setup, equalizer, enter, it's back to pop. So what that does is, depending on what, types of, what type of source you listen to, you may need to EQ it differently. It's a feature that Kenwood has and it's really unique to them. Some people love it, some people hate it. All right, so we'll go into adjusting it. We have five channels like we said, and those five channels are gonna be 6.25, 250, 1K, 4K, and 16K. Okay, and you have a plus or minus 9 dBs of adjustment. So basically what that means is you can come all the way down here and really reduce it and come up here and really make it louder. Now a lot of people you don't, those numbers, they're like, what, what does that mean? Basically what you mean is this is the sub side, this is the high side, and right in the middle is the mid range. So if you need more mid range, you're gonna to wanna to do something like that. If you need more highs, you're gonna to wanna to do something like this. If there's not enough bass, which there never is, you're gonna do something like that. You can also start with using their presets, which they have a bunch of, which we'll go through real quick. Natural, rock, pop, easy. You can see the curve change. Top 40, jazz, powerful, and then user. That's gonna be the one that you've set up. Okay, famous V-curve. Base extension allows you to, through the, uh, use the EQ, to, when you turn base extension on, it gives you more bass through the subwoofer RCA output. Um, then you, of course, you have the subwoofer volume control here. Okay, all right, let's get out of here. Now, volume offset. Volume offset is so that, depending on what source you're listening to, you can adjust it up and down. So for some reason, let's say you're listening to Bluetooth and it's quiet for some reason, like you have, I don't know, Android phone, you can turn the Bluetooth up or down to make it sound louder. You have subwoofer for volume control, so you have two of those. Go down here. You have speaker select. I'm sorry, we skipped ahead. You have bass boost. You have three settings for bass boost. You have car setting. This allows you to tell it what kind of car you're gonna put it in. So if you have a compact, full size. Now you can come over here also and tell it where the speaker's located. Now the reason why you'd wanna do this is because this unit has time correction and this will make it sound a lot better. The rear also works the same way, rear deck or door. Then you have many cars to choose from. So you have a wagon, you have a minivan, you have an SUV, long minivan, Long minivan. That's what that's what you need, man. You need a long minivan. What about a trailer? Yeah, no trailers, no trucks, no F one fifties. Um speaker select. We'll hit enter. Now when you go into the speaker select, they've made this pretty green. 
So if you come over here and you can tell it what size speaker you have and it will set a generic crossover for you. If you want to though, you can hit crossover and you can go in and you can adjust the cross. Now this has a two-way crossover, which means it has a high pass and a low pass. The front and the rear are going to be set to the same. They're not variable. Now, what frequencies can we set them at? You can set it at 50, 60, 80, 100, 120, 150, 180, and 220. You also have a slope of 6, 12, 18, and 24 dB per octave on the high pass. So, what that means is we come over here, and we can pick the frequency, and then we come over here, and we can pick the slope. And if you'll notice that line right there is changing, and what that's doing is decreasing or increasing the amount of sound that's going to get to your speakers. So if you want to block more bass out of them, you'd put it at a 24 dB slope. If you want less bass, you put it at a 6 dB slope. Now 12 is the standard, so if you just want to play it safe, put it at 12 to start. Okay, we'll come over here, and the sub is going to have basically the same frequencies, 50, 60, 80, 100, and 120, and it's also going to have a 6, 12, 18 dB or 24 dB per octave slope. Now, you come in, we'll come into here, we'll go back, and we'll go down. You have position. This is for the time correction. So you can come in here and tell that you're going to sit in the front left. This is going to put a generic size into it. If you hit adjust, you can come over here and you can actually measure. So what you do is you'd measure from your head to that speaker, and you'd hit the arrows up and down, and then you can adjust the volume on that. Adjust it down, or put it back at the zero. When you're done, you can also take it back, so like if it's getting all kooky on you, like you've, you've ah, uh, you know, just hit this and it'll take it back and you can start over. So you can't really screw it up, which is nice. Alright, so, and then bypass. If you hit this, it's going to shut everything off. No reason to do that though, because that will lose everything, everything that we've just done. And then the last thing we're going to have is drive EQ on or drive EQ off. And you say, what is drive EQ? Tell me what is drive EQ. Drive EQ. I printed it because it's a heck of a lot easier. It says, road noise is the enemy of all audio systems found in vehicles. The inherent frequencies of road noise makes a wide range of audio signals found in music. And this is the reason Kenwood engineers developed drive EQ. Bleh. Drive EQ boosts specific frequencies in the audio signal to compensate for negative impact of road noise. Bam. Boom. Right there. So that's what that does. So, if you have a noisy car, leave it on. If you got a nice quiet car, turn it off. There you go. Pretty cool, huh? Yes, it is. Okay, well, that's the EQ pack, or like I said, sound pack inside of this guy. We hope this helped. Uh, if you do have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments and we'll get back to you. That's what we do. You can find us where? On Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. That's right. You guys have a nice night. Stay tuned for the next one. Bye.